Today on the BRS 160, we're gonna get water into this tank. Hi guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the BRS 160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160 gallon reef tank. This week we'll cover selecting a suitable source of fresh water, water treatment options, selecting the right salt mix for you, proper mixing, and of course finish with the fresh and salt water insulation for the BRS 160. Since RODI is such a huge staple in reefing, we'll share what an RODI system does, how to select the right one for your water source, and what to look for from the brand you select. Even though I'm obviously biased, I think it's pretty hard not to see that the BRS RODI systems represent the best value in our industry. For those of you that disagree, I fully expect you to challenge me in the comments area down below. One of the wisest things I've ever heard in this hobby was reef keeping has very little to do with maintaining corals and fish, but everything to do with maintaining water. Maintaining pristine water with the right parameters simply results in a healthy, thriving reef tank. The first step of that is identifying a high quality source of fresh water. For most of you, it will be your home's tap water, which is likely either well water or water provided by your city, which contains some type of disinfectant. If the water is clean and free of impurities that would harm the aquarium, you can use either source of fresh water for the reef tank, the well water straight from the tap, and the city water just needs a water conditioner that will neutralize a disinfectant like this Chloramax from Hikari. The issue is none of us know what's in our water, and even fewer of us know what to look for if we did. If you have well water, you probably paid for a professional water report at some point to make sure it's safe for drinking, so you could take a look at that. You could also contact your city's water supply and ask them for a water report. Biggest things you'd want to look for are probably heavy metals, phosphate, nitrite, nitrate, disinfection byproducts, and uniquely high organic or inorganic chemicals. Almost none of us want to sort through that mess or deal with the uncertainty, so we just produce water at home we know is safe for our reef tanks. The easiest way to do that is with the reverse osmosis deionization system commonly referred to as RODI. These systems contain a series of filters which progressively polish the water and essentially remove everything. The sediment filters reduce rust, dirt, and sediment. The carbon blocks reduce disinfectants and chemicals. The RO membrane then removes up to 99% of the salts, metals, and other contaminants. However, things with low molecular weights or small ionic charges will pass through the membrane fairly easy. This includes common reef tank concerns like nitrite, nitrate, phosphate, and chloramines. To remove these, the RDI system gives the water a final polish on that last stage with a cartridge filled with deionization resin. The resin will remove virtually everything the RO membrane missed and create that suitable source of fresh water we're looking for. Selecting an RODI system that's right for you can seem a little daunting, but it doesn't have to be. The main difference is just the amount of stages, with most value systems being four stages and more advanced units being five or six. I'll try and make it simple. If you have well water or know your city uses chlorine as a disinfectant and believe these sources to be reasonably clean, a four stage unit will do the job and you don't need to spend the money on more expensive five or six stage units. This probably applies to about half the reefers out there. If you're part of the other 50% and your city uses chloramines, which is chlorine reacted with ammonia, or your water supply has high levels of nitrate or phosphate, you're going to want an RODI system with multiple carbon blocks and DI stages, so a six stage unit would be ideal. Chloramines are troublesome and super hard to remove because they're much more stable than chlorine alone. We absolutely want to remove this mixture of ammonia and chlorine before it gets to the tank. For some unknown reason, some reefers still like to debate the performance of standard carbon blocks on chloramines, but anyone who takes the time to test their carbon blocks for themselves will find the results undeniable. Since most of you have no desire to test this type of thing for yourself, we did it for you a few months back. We tested a couple of the most trusted carbon blocks designed to treat chlorine, with one rated for 6,000 gallons and one rated for 20,000 gallons. The first one didn't even make it past 40 gallons before it was allowing more than 50% of the chloramines through, and the second one rated for 20,000 gallons just barely made it past 100 gallons before it was letting half of the chloramines through. There's just no question about it. Typical carbon blocks designed to treat for chlorine are basically worthless when it comes to treating for chloramines. A large majority of the chloramines that make it through the carbon blocks will pass straight through the membrane as well because of the small molecular weight. However, most of the chloramines will then be removed by the DI resin, but this is dependent on the resin being mostly charged, and it's also probably the most expensive way to remove chloramines. 
To solve all this and properly treat the water the way an RODI system is designed to function, you need two things. Starting with a carbon block that's designed specifically to treat for chloramines, they do cost a few bucks more, but rather than get 40 gallons out of the filter, you'll likely get a few thousand, which makes it a pretty obvious choice. Even then, because chloramines are so hard to treat for, some portion are still likely to pass through a single block, an effect that increases the longer the system is on, which is why it's important to have a second carbon block in place that consistently takes that reduced level from the first carbon block down to almost nothing. As to other hard to remove contaminants like phosphate and nitrate, these are going to be removed by the DI resin. Low levels of these contaminants are likely removed with a single DI cartridge, but it's contact time with charged resin that does that. With higher levels, you're best served with two, and this is the reason why. The DI cartridge depletes from the bottom up, which means there's a full 10 inches of charged resin the water is going to pass through. Once the DI resin is 50% depleted, the contact time the water has with charged resin is cut in half. Once the cartridge is 75% depleted, the water only has one-fourth the contact time with charged resin and probably letting some of the harder to remove elements through. No one wants to replace the resin before it's depleted and why running two resin cartridges is so popular. With two, I can make sure there's always a full 10 inches of charged resin in that second cartridge. Once the first one's fully depleted, move the second one to the first spot and put a brand new cartridge in the second. This way you can maximize your filter dollar as well as the quality of water, which is a win no matter how you look at it. The biggest issue with all this is almost no one knows if their water contains high levels of phosphate or nitrate or if it's treated with chloramines or chlorine. If saving space and expense is the biggest priority, I'd call your city for that water report or use test kits to find out. Outside of that, to find out if you have chloramines, we stock some cheap total and free chlorine test strips you can use to identify the type of disinfectant. If the total and free chlorine match, your city uses chlorine. If the total chlorine reads significantly higher than the free chlorine, your city almost certainly uses chloramines. If you have no desire to call your city or mess with buying a bunch of test kits, just pick up a six-stage system with universal filters designed to treat both chlorine and chloramines and dual DI canisters for everything else. You'll never have to be concerned about the quality of water you're producing because a system like this will handle basically any water supply out there and produce ideal contaminant-free water for your reef tank. If you already own a four stage and just found out your city switched to chloramines or became aware your water's riddled with phosphate, you do not need to go out and buy a new system. Just add another canister or two to the system you already own. We have some super easy to install kits for upgrading your system to a five or six stage, which only takes a few minutes to install. Before we move on to our salt discussion, if you're in the market for an RODI system, I'd like to give you a handful of things you should look for when you buy one. You'll probably see the BRS systems recommended a lot, particularly by experienced reefers. I think it's because after you consider what really makes a solid RODI system, the choice is pretty obvious. End of the day, this is just a bunch of plastic with some filters in it, so how is one better than the other? It starts with the quality of materials. Most of the systems out there use cheap imported push connect fittings which cost around 10 cents a piece. We want to make sure this thing never leaks on you, so we pay close to a buck a piece for our US made double O-ring Murloc fittings. This is what we would use in our home, so it's what we put on the BRS systems. Probably the most important component of this is the filters because it isn't the plastic containers that do the work, it's the filters inside. The system's only going to be as good as the filters put in it. Most of the industry uses untested, no-name imported filters with no performance data and really vague or misleading terminology like chloramine, removal, capabilities, but in the fine print of the instructions state you actually need to buy different filters if you want to treat for chloramines, which is pretty misleading. Our carbon block sediment filters and membranes are from known brands you already trust like Dow, GE, and BRS, all of which are NSF certified, which is an important component of maintaining quality standards. We use the latest NSF certified Dow 75 gallon per day membranes, which reach 99% rejection and a flow rate match to ensure the proper contact time with the filters and best performance with common home water pressures. The BRS NSF certified universal carbon blocks are designed specifically to treat with chloramines, but the things that make them great at removing hard to treat chloramines make them exceptional performers on chlorine as well, and why we call them a universal filter where you know you're covered with either disinfectant. You can even visually see they contain more carbon and feel the added weight, which is part of the reason the BRS carbon blocks outperform the rest. 
Similar to that, you can literally squeeze the NSF certified GE PureTrex and ROSAVE.Z sediment filters and feel the graded density and increased capacity. All of these filters are going to significantly outperform those unbranded import filters. We also include more water connection options, so it works when you get it. Most systems out there include just a single connection. The BRS value line includes connections for your garden hose, laundry tub, or kitchen sink, including adapter rings, which fit almost every sink. The universal line also includes an adapter for copper pipe, under sink installations, a shutoff valve, a float valve, and both systems come with a pack of 25 free and total chlorine test strips so you can identify which disinfectant your city uses as well as monitor system performance. A one-year warranty is pretty standard in our industry. BRS offers a limited lifetime warranty, which is basically one year on moving parts and the rest of your life on everything else. We back that with a customer service team that knows RODI and is easy to access. Behind that, we have countless helpful videos directly related to RODI systems and how to maximize the quality of water, lifetime of your filters, and troubleshoot when needed. The only thing left is price. I'm sure it's super hard to believe after all that, but we're almost always the lowest cost by a significant margin, and we offer free shipping on all of the systems. That's because we design the systems ourselves, purchase the components by the container load, build them right here in Minnesota, and sell them direct, which is a hard model for anyone to compete with, but great for reefers in need of a quality RODI system. So if you can find a company that uses better components, trusted and certified filters, includes more accessories, has a better warranty, costs less, and ships for free, I would absolutely suggest they're a better option than us. However, I just don't think that exists and probably why our systems are so popular in the reefing community. Now that we have our freshwater source covered, it's time to talk salt. The one question everyone wants to know is which salt is the best? There just isn't an answer. If there was, we'd all know what it is by now. End of the day, reefers have had various degrees of success with all of them. What we can share with you is the distinct differences between a few, so you can select one that aligns with your style of reefing. Reef Crystals and Instant Ocean is probably the most popular and lowest cost option out there. They don't provide a lot of details in the product, so there just isn't a whole lot to say other than Reef Crystals and Instant Ocean is a staple of reefing, and a lot of people have had success using it. One of the selling points they do offer is the included metal detoxifier, which neutralizes heavy metals in your tap and mixed salt water. If you're looking for something that you can be absolutely sure will work and the lowest cost option as well, this is it. Red Sea differentiates itself from the pack with a natural approach to reefing, and the salts are produced by evaporating water from the Red Sea. 72% of the salt in this bucket is naturally harvested food-grade sodium chloride from the Red Sea. Each of these harvested sodium chloride crystals contain traces of 45 different elements naturally found in the Red Sea. To this they add all the major minor elements required to make a quality homogeneous salt mix. The blue bucket is designed to emulate the parameters found in tropical reefs and what we recommend to most seasoned reefers who are really good about maintaining your calcium, alkalinity and magnesium levels. The Black Bucket Coral Pro contains elevated levels, which may have growth benefits associated with them, but I also think it's really ideal for a beginning reefer who has only a handful of corals, is still figuring the hobby out, and water changes is still a major part of replacing calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. More or less, I'd say this is one of the best salts on the market for those looking to maintain elevated levels of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, newer reefers, and those who appreciate the more natural approach to reefing. HW Marine Mix is a 50-year-old German brand that takes a totally different approach to their salt mix and uses 100% synthetically processed salts to produce one of the purest salts out there. The synthetic processing virtually eliminates any chemical or environmental impurities. Mined and evaporated salts will always have some amount of impurities plating out within the layers of the salt crystal. The higher grade salt sources does make the salt cost a bit more, but the resulting purity means they don't need to use artificial clarifiers, chelators, or anti-caking agents like EDTA or Montmorillonite clay, which many of the salt manufacturers use to get the salt to clear quickly and bind up excess metals in lower grade source materials. Many of these additives have been shown to negatively impact nutrient uptake and responsible for a lot of that brown crud you find in the bottom of your mixing container. This is one of the reasons why HW Marine Mix is globally popular in aquaculture, public aquariums, seafood holding systems, and marine wholesale, where survivability equals profitability. 
HW has also been cited as one of the more popular salts used in university research and environmental studies. The EPA has referenced marine mix as a replacement for natural seawater at its bioassay research labs. HW also does something somewhat unique by adding amino acids, which are designed to help promote growth, nutrient transport, biological oxidation, nerve transmission, pigment formation, increased metabolism, provides antioxidants, proper protein formation, and a whole slew of other biological processes. HW also comes in two forms, the professional and the reefer. I think the professional is formulated best for professional applications like research, aquaculture, or fish-only systems. The reefer has calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels more typical to the average reef tank and what I'd suggest to most reefers. I think there's enough information here for you to decide what best fits your style of reefing, but I know all of you are wondering what we use here at BRS. I personally used all three of these brands and I would recommend all of them, but the 20 or so tanks here at BRS use HW salt. I just appreciate using the highest quality source materials and it fits my style of reefing. Once you select your salt, mixing is pretty easy. Most reefers use these Rubbermaid Brew trash cans, which are considered reef safe. Just fill it with your selected source of fresh water and add your salt. If you're looking for something a bit cooler than a garbage can, 55 gallon food grade drums are popular and even cooler are the vertical and cone shaped bottom storage tanks. These can be found at farm supply and plumbing specialty stores. If you have trouble finding one, I commonly use Norwesco tanks. Check out their website for a dealer in your area. There are a few different tools you can use to measure salinity, but a refractometer is really the only one I'd use for mixing my salt water like this. We want the salt to read 1.026 specific gravity or 35 parts per thousand. They come in a manual version and a really cool digital version. The digital version is one of those reefing luxuries that most people won't ever buy, but if you do, you'll never go back. There just isn't anything more satisfying than an instant digital readout. Once the tank is running, you'll need to mix and heat the salt water before use, so throw in a medium-sized power head and a heater. Okay, so on to the installation of our solution. The water here in Minneapolis is near the legal limits of chloramines at over three parts per million. So we're going to use a six-stage universal system made for dealing with chloramines. I selected the Water Saver Plus model, which includes a triple TDS meter, flush kit, pressure gauge, and dual in-series membrane installation, which cuts the wastewater down by half and produces water twice as fast. Plumbing this is pretty easy. I mentioned it comes with all kinds of water supply adapters. We're going to install the under sink option that goes on the cold water supply, then slide the red tubing into the Murloc push connect fitting. This is also a good place to install the included shutoff valve as well. We also use a drain adapter here for a permanent connection to the waistline. Make sure to install it above the trap right underneath the sink and slide in the black waistline tubing. Now all you need to do is open the valve, flush the new filters for 10 to 20 minutes and you're ready to start producing water for the tank, which will be emitted out of the blue line. For water storage, we use two of these 65 gallon Norwesco vertical storage tanks. I installed a fixed position float valve on each, a three-way valve between them and the blue purified water line feeding the valve. This valve will make it super easy to switch the water supply between my fresh water and salt water storage tanks. I also threw in a Phoenix heater set to 78 degrees and a Hydor Corellia power head to mix the salt water. Because the tank is empty, I'm just going to mix the first batch directly in the tank, fill it up with fresh water, get the new vector return pump going, and add the salt. This is going to take around a box and a quarter of salt to mix properly. I also add a couple of temporary power heads just to mix it well. That's about all there is to it. We have our fresh water solution installed, salt mix selected, and storage tanks for both fresh and salt water in place. The tank is mixed to 1.026 specific gravity and circulating with a new vector pump from Ecotech. I'm going on a quick vacation, so I'm going to miss you next week, but the following week we're going to talk about temperature control, heaters, chillers, and fans. You won't want to miss that, so hit the subscribe button. If you're interested in checking out any of the products we talked about today, check out this link. See you next week with week 8 of the BRS 160 Temperature.